This conference will now be recorded. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's Healthy Happens Here webinar series, a series of virtual webinars that will cover a variety of different health topics, including nutrition, mental health, tobacco cessation, and chronic disease self-management. My name is Candace Schottenlor, and I'm a health educator here with the community engagement team with the Florida Department of Health in Miami-Dade County. And so before we begin for today, I just wanted to share a few housekeeping items with everybody. Uh, please know that you have the capability to have your camera on or off, whichever you prefer. And you also have the ability to mute and unmute your microphones. Uh, please remember while you're not speaking to keep them muted. And again, if you have any questions throughout today's webinar, you can put them in the chat box and we will be monitoring that uh, later on for our Q&A discussion. And please feel free to enter any of those questions you have and we'll make sure to get those addressed. And so for today, the event is called Cholesterol Basics. And we thank you for joining us today to commemor commemorate National Cholesterol Education Month. This month aims to inform the public about the dangers of high cholesterol and its connection with the leading cause of death around the world, heart disease. And during the month of September, um, we wanted to share this to bring awareness about the importance of knowing your cholesterol levels and creating a healthier lifestyle. During today's presentation, you will learn from a local health educator, Melissa Maytin, who will help us to understand cholesterol, how it can affect your health, the risk factors, and how to improve your cholesterol levels. And so now I'd like to introduce our speaker for today. Our presenter is Melissa Maytin, and she is a health educator with the Community Health Action Team here at the Florida Department of Health in Miami-Dade County. And now I'll turn it over to Melissa to get us started for today. Thank you, Candice. So um, as Candice mentioned, uh, my name is Melissa Newton, and I work for the Florida Department of Health in Miami Dade County um, in the Office of Community Health and Planning. Um, today, we're going to review a little bit about cholesterol basics, and this presentation is going to help you understand cholesterol, how, can it, how it can affect your health, some of the risk factors, and how to improve your cholesterol levels overall. So, to get us started today, I am going to go ahead and give you a test your knowledge quiz. So what we're going to do is that I'm going to read out each question and then in the chat box that you can just put true or false. Okay, and we'll go one by one. So true or false, high cholesterol is a risk factor for heart disease. Okay, and I'll give it just a couple more seconds. I see true, a oh, Y, I'm going to assume that's a yes. True, true, yep. And that is true. Number two, cholesterol cannot obstruct blood flow. False. And that is, that is absolutely false. And consuming saturated fat lowers your cholesterol levels. So that's number three. Consuming saturated fat lowers your cholesterol levels. False, yep. Dietary cholesterol comes from the food you eat. True, yes, yes, and that is true. And finally, your total cholesterol should be less than 200. Okay, and that is true. And thank you so much for answering that. So uh, before we move forward to the next slide, uh, cholesterol is a term that we use pretty often, or you probably know someone um, who you've had a conversation with or has high cholesterol, or you've had your cholesterol checked, but what exactly is cholesterol? Can anyone type in the box what they think their best guess or the definition of what cholesterol is? Give it a couple seconds. Okay, so no problem there because I have the definition right here. So cholesterol is a waxy fat-like substance that is found in every cell in our bodies. 
and the body needs cholesterol to perform important tasks such as forming cell membranes, making hormones, making vitamin D, and it also helps your digestion. And blood cholesterol is the type that circulates in your blood and in the body. So specifically liver makes all that you need. So really think about cholesterol in two types. So you have your blood cholesterol, which is already made by your body. And then we have dietary cholesterol. And dietary cholesterol is a type that you get from the food that you eat, right? So uh, it's especially found in animal products, such as meat, seafood, poultry, eggs, and dairy. And I apologize, there's a bit of delay when I click uh, the slides to move along. So thank you for bearing with me. Uh, so as Candice mentioned, cholesterol and heart disease are linked and the body makes all the cholesterol we need, right? So if we add too much from the food we eat, we do increase the risk of heart disease. Uh, it's recommended that people eat as little dietary cholesterol as possible while on a healthy eating plan. And if you look at the little picture on the slide here, you can see that as cholesterol, which is also called plaque, builds up in the arteries, they begin to narrow and begin to block the flow of blood. Uh, these plaques can eventually shut down the coronary arteries that feed the heart and may result in a heart attack. So can anyone tell me, and you can type it in the box, uh, what types of cholesterol are there? So what are the two types of cholesterol? LDL and HDL, good. Okay, can any, does anyone know what that stands for by any chance? Or, okay, low density and high density, thank you. And uh, which one is considered the bad and which one is considered the good? LDL or HDL? LDL bad, yep. So HDL is good, yep. Thank you for taking the time to do that. So let's move along. So yeah, so like you mentioned, um, cholesterol is transported through the blood by proteins that are called lipoproteins, and there are two types. There's LDL, or low-density lipoprotein, uh, and this one pays cholesterol on artery walls. It restricts the flow of blood, and high levels of LDL cholesterol are unhealthy, and they can contribute to heart disease, and this is why it's called bad cholesterol. HDL cholesterol, or high-density lipoprotein, carry cholesterol away from cells and return it to the liver. The liver then flushes it out of your body. So high levels of HDL are good for your body and protect you from heart disease. A good way that uh, someone taught me how to remember is LDL and HDL. If you think of the L and LDL, you think of lousy. In HDL, you think the H of happy. So lousy and happy. And you can remember which one is bad and which one is good. And that may be helpful or it may not be helpful to you, but there you go. <laughs> So who should be tested? So since high cholesterol usually has no signs or symptoms, having your cholesterol checked is really the only way to find out if your cholesterol is high. And adults should have a cholesterol test every four to six years. Individuals who are at risk should have a cholesterol test more often. Uh, and children and adolescents should have at least one cholesterol test between the ages of nine and 11, and again, between 17 and 20. Testing your cholesterol does require a blood draw and may also require fasting. A cholesterol test or lipoprotein profile measures your total cholesterol, your LDL cholesterol, which we mentioned was the bad one, your HDL cholesterol, the good one, and your triglyceride levels. And just to mention, triglycerides are a type of fat in your blood that your body uses for energy, and high triglyceride levels may indicate an increased risk for heart disease. So what do your numbers mean? Uh, the following chart shows the ranges for desirable cholesterol and triglyceride levels. So let's just go over them. So as I mentioned in the quiz, uh, what total cholesterol do you want? You want it to be less than 200. And your LDL, your bad cholesterol, less than 100, HDL 60 or higher, and triglyceride levels less than 150. So uh, now we're gonna talk a little bit about the risk factors. But before I show that slide, um, if anyone can just type into the chat box, what are some of the risk factors that you've heard of or you know of for cholesterol? What puts you at risk for high cholesterol? Mm -hmm. 
Do we have any ideas? Clogged arteries for nutrition. Any other ideas? I'll give it a couple of seconds. Yep. Well, thank you. So um, the following factors do put you at risk for high cholesterol, and these are out of your control. Okay. So first, your family has history. So if you have family members with high cholesterol, it does increase your risk for developing it yourself. Uh, your age. So your chances of developing high cholesterol does increase as you get older. And finally, your sex. So young women do have a lower risk for high cholesterol than young men. However, at about age 45 to 55 years old, a woman's cholesterol does rise to a level equal to or greater to of a man of the same age. So then if these are the uncontrollable, uh, maybe we can mention some of those controllable ones, right? So someone did say poor nutrition. Anybody else wanna take a guess at another controllable risk factor? or other ones that might put you at risk for high cholesterol? Exercise, okay, that's very good. Okay. So yes, yeah, so cholesterol risk factors that you can work to control are, number one, a diet high in saturated or trans fat. So this would put you at risk. Uh, cholesterol is found naturally in foods, like we mentioned, that are derived from animals such as meat, eggs, and cheese. So diets that are high in saturated and trans fats can increase your blood cholesterol levels. Uh, the second thing is an inactive lifestyle. So being inactive can make you gain weight, which will contribute to high cholesterol. Uh, excess weight and obesity. Uh, this raises your levels of LDL or bad cholesterol. It affects how your body uses cholesterol and your body's ability to remove that LDL from your blood which raises your risk of heart disease and stroke. Uh, smoking, uh, tobacco smoke does damage blood vessels and hardens your arteries, making them more likely to collect high deposits. High blood pressure, it forces your heart to work harder. Uh, it adds stress to the walls of veins and arteries. So of course, it's also a risk factor and type two diabetes because this also affects the walls of veins and arteries and the way that the body uses sugars and fats in the blood. So diet, diabetes often leads to high triglycerides and LDL cholesterol levels, as well as low HDL cholesterol. So preventing, right? Uh, so how do we prevent high cholesterol? Um, lifestyle changes are usually the first steps that you can take to lower cholesterol levels and to help reduce your risk of a heart attack and stroke. So with healthy lifestyle, the first tip is to eat healthy. And some of the key recommendations include reducing your saturated and trans fats, reducing uh, the amount of sodium you, you eat and added sugars, choosing foods high in fiber, such as oatmeal, citrus fruits, beans, and peas, choosing unsaturated fats, so quote unquote healthy fats, right? As avocados, olive, olive oil, and nuts, and choosing fruits, vegetables, whole grains, lean meats, and low fat or fat-free dairy products. And I wanted to share this resource with you in case you have not heard of it, um, which is Choose My Plate. And the USDA did develop my plate to make your selection of appropriate foods easier. And if you visit the website on the slide, which is choosemyplate.gov, and you click on different tabs, tabs on the website, you can access many great resources, including um, tips and ideas on how to get started eating and living healthier. You can even make your own my plate plan. Uh, based on your age, your sex, your height, your weight, and your physical activity level. They have many resources as well. Um, if you work with the community, print materials and infographics that you can uh, give out. And you can also browse like audience in other languages like Spanish or target populations like children and families. So another tip for preventing high cholesterol is to get regular physical activity. Um, and physical activity can help you maintain or reach a healthy weight. It lowers your cholesterol and controls your blood pressure levels. It's recommended that adults get 2.5 hours of moderate intensity activity every week. And this time can be broken down to 30 minutes per day. And of course, those 30 minutes, if you don't have time to take 30 minutes at a time, you can break that down even further to two 15-minute sessions. 
So some tips to get started is to start taking first walks or go on a bike ride. The next tip is uh, to read and maintain a healthy weight, right? Which uh, will go along with those first two tips that we spoke about, eating healthy and physical activity. Um, and reaching and maintaining a healthy weight will help you lower your LDL cholesterol and triglyceride levels. It will increase your HDL cholesterol level. It'll help lower your blood pressure. It'll improve the way that your body uses blood sugar, which also helps prevent and control diabetes. Um, and of course, you want to talk to your doctor about what a healthy weight is for you because that number will look different uh, for everyone, especially um, where you're starting off. Next, you want to quit smoking if you do smoke. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, tobacco smoke can damage artery walls and blood vessels, and quitting smoking reduces the risk of high cholesterol and heart disease. You also want to limit alcohol. So on, on days which alcohol is consumed, men should have no more than two drinks per day, and women should have no more than one drink per day. Um, this is because too much alcohol can increase cholesterol and triglyceride levels. So another resource I wanted to share with you is the Quit Your Way program. The Florida Department of Health's Quit Your Way program provides free and evidence-based tools and services, and you can access tools like a two-week starter kit of nicotine replacement patches, they have text to quit, email tips, and a quit guide. You can choose as many as you need or use them in addition to phone, group, and web quit services. And uh, you can get more inf information about this by visiting tobaccofreeflorida.com. And I believe the number is on the slide too. It's one eight seven seven. you can now. And of course, um, you can do this for yourself or maybe a family member who smokes. So we spoke about prevention, right? So how do you manage high cholesterol? So some people may need to take medication to lower their cholesterol levels, which your doctor will prescribe if you need it. Uh, cholesterol lowering medications work best when you combine them with lifestyle changes. So even though you're taking medication, I highly recommend that you, know, you make lifestyle changes like uh, being more physically active, um, eating healthier, and some of the other tips that we would use. So um, before we go again, let's test our knowledge again. And these are the same questions that I asked at the beginning, uh, just to get us um, back on what we discussed. So you can type it in the chat again. High cholesterol is a risk factor for heart disease. Is that true or false? All right, yep. That's true. Cholesterol cannot obstruct blood flow. That is false. Consuming saturated fat lowers your cholesterol levels. Mm -hmm. Dietary cholesterol comes from the food you eat. And total cholesterol should be less than 200. And that is true. So again, some of the resources that you can access for more information about this is the CDC website. Um, the NIH also has good information. Choose my plate, especially if you need ideas for healthy eating and tobacco-free Florida if you need help. And I believe we have some questions that were submitted uh, through registration. Thank you so much, Melissa, for that presentation and sharing those resources about how to reduce and take better care of your cholesterol. And so I did wanna go ahead and share with everybody as a friendly reminder, you can definitely go ahead and add in any uh, questions that you may have into the chat box. And then also when we did registration, we did receive a few questions um, from you all today. So we're gonna go ahead and get those answered. And so Melissa, the first question we have is, how can I control cholesterol with diet? Sure, so as I mentioned, um, a healthy diet is one of the ways to prevent and control high cholesterol. And really you wanna focus on reducing saturated and trans fats, sodium and added sugars. So reading those food labels is very important. Um, and, and in the back, you'll find what the added sugars are, what the sodium is, um, the amount of saturated and trans fat. And you always wanna pick 
the best option. So make sure you compare when buying those products. You also want to incorporate foods that are high in fiber and unsaturated fats. And of course, you want to choose a variety of fruits and vegetables as well. And I think that answered it, but let me know if you need more. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for those helpful tips. And so the next um, question and comment that we received is related to hereditary cholesterol. Um, can it be controlled only with diet or do you need medication too? So although heredity or family um, history is a contributing factor, like we reviewed, it is a risk factor. Um, that's not really what's going to determine your treatment. What will determine your treatment is how high or the level of cholesterol that you have. Um, so really, once you have had your cholesterol checked, your doctor is going to maybe prescribe medications, um, but he'll, he or she will inform you of the best form of treatment uh, for you. But yeah, heredity is a contributing factor to whether you uh, have a risk for cholesterol, but it'll be determined by your level. Thank you so much for that. The next question that we did receive was, um, can you provide meal prep suggestions for breakfast, lunch, and or dinner? And if you could also maybe provide a few healthy snack ideas to help reduce the cholesterol. Sure, so uh, for meal prepping, which is very popular now, um, you wanna start by seeing what you have. So plan meals that use foods that you already have so you can avoid any food, food waste, of course. So you wanna look in your freezer and your cabinets and refrigerator and make sure to check expiration dates, especially off those cans that are normally at the back. So you wanna make sure you use all of that first. Uh, you can map out your meals. So by writing out the meals that you plan to eat through the week, you can use that as a guide. It's also helpful um, for your grocery list, right? If you know what you're gonna be making. Uh, be sure to list your beverages and your snacks too. Sometimes it's easy to forget about snacks and then you have your main meals and you're like, wait, what am I gonna snack on? Uh, so that's important to write down too. Uh, you want to think about your schedule too, right? So you want to prepare meals and sides on the weekends when maybe you have more time or whenever your days off are. And it's going to help you during the busy weekdays and being realistic about the type of meals that you can actually make um, as, as opposed to, you know, lofty meals that you may not have time to make. Uh, so just thinking about your schedule. Um, you want to make a grocery list as well. So start by listing ingredients for the meals that you plan to make and cross off items you already have. And this will really help you shop on a budget as well. Um, so buying for the week can help you make fewer shopping trips. Um, using leftovers is a really good, um, it's a really good idea too. So preparing enough of a dish to eat multiple times during the week, or you can freeze it to enjoy uh, some time later. Uh, making leftovers part of your plan can really save you time and money. Uh, and a couple of popular recipes now, uh, since you did ask for some ideas, are overnight oats um, or egg muffins with veggies. So, you know, overnight oats, there are many healthy recipes out there that you can use. And egg muffins, you, you basically make these little egg muffins and tins, and you can make all different sorts of toppings in them and use them throughout the week. But really, you always want to be aware of whatever recipe you use of added sugars, of any saturated fat and sodium, and of course, the portion that you're eating. Thank you, Melissa, for those helpful recipes and tips um, with everybody's busy schedule. And I did want to um, share, we also had received um, in regards to good cholesterol, um, they're asking, could you share the importance about physical activity on HDL cholesterol levels? Uh, sure. So as I mentioned in the presentation, um, an, in in an inactive lifestyle can make you gain weight. Uh, and weight gain can contribute to high cholesterol. Uh, the recommendation for physical activity is 2.5 hours a week. And again, it can be broken down to 30 minutes uh, five times a week. Um, if you can't do 30 minutes at a time, you can consider taking a 15 minute walk in the morning or maybe one in the afternoon. And of course, you always wanna consult your doctor before beginning any exercise program. Um, and they can really help you determine what the right level of physical activity is for you. Thank you for that insight. And so I just wanted to share with everybody, if you have any other questions, we'll take them at this time if you want to put them in the chat box. 
And Melissa, we did receive one in the chat box, and I think you may have covered this a bit earlier. Um, they're asking, can you please address familial cholesterol that does not respond to prescriptions? And I think this may be related to medical management. Um, if you want to just um, share a little bit about that. Sure. So yeah, so um, in terms of her hereditary cholesterol, I did uh, answer that um, before, but just to mention, yes, this is something you have to work with your doctor uh, for um, in, in terms of the type of medication you're taking, um, how much you're taking it. Um, yeah, that's something you have to consult because it's an individual um, issue. Thank you so much for sharing that again with everybody. And so I'll just give it another um, minute or two for anybody else to share any other questions they may have. But we thank you, Melissa, for sharing on this important uh, topic and all the insight that you provided to us today. Okay, I'm not seeing any other questions at this moment. And so at this time, I would just like to um, share with everybody again that this series is a part of the Florida Department of Health and Miami-Dade County Office of Community Health and Planning. And these events, we host them monthly that cover a variety of different topics, um, such as nutrition, physical activity, tobacco cessation, and chronic disease self-management. And I also wanted to announce a few of upcoming future events. We'll be hosting our next Healthy Happens Here webinar on stress management, and that will be hosted on Wednesday, October 20th. And so you'll see those details uh, coming out soon. And then the second event that I wanted to share with you, we have our Eat Fresh series Facebook live events that we host quarterly as well. And this will be hosted the next one on Friday, December 3rd at 12 p.m. And so for this, um, really, you're joining us in the Consortium Kitchen as we're going through a live cooking demonstration uh, for this series. And you'll learn about nutrition, healthy eating, and healthy lifestyle tips that you can take into play into your daily life. And finally, please make sure to visit HealthyMiamiDade.org to receive the latest up-to-dates from the Consortium for a Healthier Miami Dade, as well as other health educational information that we have provided. And we'll also be sharing in the chat box the evaluation link for today's event. If you could just please take a moment to complete this evaluation, as we'll use your feedback and for ideas and future developments for webinars. And so again, we thank you so much for joining us today. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the evaluation in the chat. And you guys will also receive an email later on too with this information if you're unable to complete it now. So thank you again for joining us today. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day.